Tattoos covering every inch of his body, ice style grill, and expensive jewelry. You cannot miss Bikey Boss, Brent Wrecker, from bringing the Rock Machine Motorcycle Club from Canada to Australia to join in the Finks MC. He was known for saying, Bikey Clubs are the last stand for human rights in Australia. No one is allowed to do anything anymore. We, just like everyone else, just want to hang out with our mates and go for a drink on Friday night without being told that we can't. Was he a straight up criminal or just the president of a motorcycle club who loved the brotherhood but dead in a prison cell is how Brent's life ended. This is the Brent Breakfast story. Brent grew up in Victoria, Australia. He attended Caringill High School before completing his 12th year in Perth. By his teens, his interest in sports went away and he developed the love for the outlaw lifestyle. He would hang out at clubhouses, tattoo parlors, party with women. At the age of 16, Brent got his first tattoo. It was flowers on his left shoulder for his sisters, Caitlin and Lauren. In Australia, they called bikers bikies and Brent was all in on the bikey lifestyle and he decided he wanted to start his own motorcycle club in Perth. Brent got in touch with the Canadian chapter of the Rock Machine MC and asked if he could set up an Australian chapter. After some back and forth, they accepted his offer. This was the beginning of Brent's journey to the 1% of lifestyle. If you're not familiar, with the Rock Machine MC, they were founded in Montreal, Canada in 1986. The club had a legendary beef with the Hells Angels that led to many deaths. In 2009, law enforcement made it known to everyone, everywhere, that the Rock Machine Motorcycle Club had opened a chapter in Perth. This announcement didn't go well with the other clubs, as motorcycle clubs are very territorial. This was seen as disrespect by the already established 1% club, the Rebels MC, but not checking in with them. Checking in means that you go to a club that is well established and get the okay before you open up a new motorcycle club or a new chapter. Brant decided to not follow any of these rules that usually go down in MC culture that always lead the war. Threats started to take place online of all places. It didn't take long for things to escalate and be taken to the next level. In 2010, there began to be several clashes between the clubs, fights and brawls. In July 2010, a fight broke out at a nightclub between members of both clubs, which led to several people being injured. A couple months later in October, members of the Rock Machine MC firebombed a Rebel MC's member's vehicle. The firebombing continued in November when members of the Rock Machine lit a tattoo parlor on fire in another rebel's vehicle. And motorcycle clubs all over started to get cracked down on by the police. On November 29th, 2010, a Rock Machine member was arrested when police found a stash of high-powered firearms in his car during a traffic stop. He found an automatic rifle. 12 gauge sawed off shotgun and a 44 magnum rifle along with ammunition during this beef with the rebels brent was rock machine's sergeant of arms and didn't shy away from putting work in brent would end up going to jail for extortion it was reported that brent told the two guys that they would have to either pay up money or be beaten it started over accusations that the two victims were telling people they were part of the club which they both said was untrue police said brent told the victims he either wanted cash or video footage of the two of them beating up their own friend they also were told that they would be killed if they went to the police the two were unable to pay the two thousand dollars and didn't want to beat up their own friend so they went to the authorities brent was arrested and sentenced to three years in prison it was while he was locked up 
his 21 year old brother Tyron took his own life in Melbourne on New Year's Eve 2011. Brent was never the same again after that day. He moved back to Melbourne and joined the Finks MC. The Finks were an Australian outlaw motorcycle club that was formed in Adelaide, Australia in 1969 and now also has chapters in other states. The name comes from the Wizard of Id cartoon where the peasants, to his dismay, often proclaim the king is a fink. The logo used by the finks is a bung, the king's jester. In 2014, the finks redesigned their patch. The drunk character of the bung was out and the new gun toting, more gangster looking bung was in. A senior member of the club said at the time, this was done to send a warning. Back in 2001, Finks MC were targeted by the police and what they call Operation Avatar, a law enforcement task force aimed to go after all 1% motorcycle clubs. In 2010, members of the Finks MC and members of the Coffin Cheaters MC were attending the Harley Street bike drag racing event where it's claimed that one member spit on another. This led to a huge melee which resulted in one of the Finks members being shot in the leg and someone actually got their fingers sliced off. In 2015, the club came up against heavy pressure from law enforcement, which nearly caused the club to shut down. Police raided 20 Fink's properties and arrested 17 members, charging them with everything that they could find in the book. This led to the club struggling financially under the weight of mounting legal fees and had a horrible reputation across Melbourne. Still, Brent believed he could change it all. He wanted to change the perception of the club and get rid of the horrible way people looked at them. Being a member of the Finks MC was his life. Brent eventually became the Finks national president, working his way up the ranks. He would rev his bike and everyone would move out his way. As a new president, he wanted the world to know the Finks have returned to Victoria. In an interview with the Daily Mail, that the club sees Victoria as an important place to hold territory as it's one of the few states where bikies can hang out with their mates and go for a drink on Friday night without being told they can't. Brent said the days of police pulling their members over and finding illegal substances are over. He tried to clean up the club's reputation but found himself with enemies inside and outside of the club. When you're in a motorcycle club, a lot of times the people inside your club could be your biggest enemies. In May 2018, at 4.40 a.m., while Brent and his wife and their two-week-old son slept, their home was shot at multiple times and Brent's car was firebombed. Bullets went through his house and the next-door neighbor's house. Luckily, Brent and his wife and son were not shot. Footage was shown of a man shooting in the back driver's side of his car with a high-powered weapon. Ten minutes after the attack, the police found what they believed to be the getaway car set on fire nearby. The night of violence made front page news put everyone on notice and led to large scale police investigations. Police were also concerned that they could have an all out biker war on their hands. Shortly after enforcer Matthew Bruce was charged with the incident. Bruce was the Fink's motorcycle club sergeant of arms. In a motorcycle club, the sergeant of arms is the general of the club. When it's wartime, when there's beef, when there's issues, he is the one who leads the pack. They are some of the most ferocious members in the club and it's a very important and high position in a motorcycle club. From that day on, Brent feared for his family's safety and got a gun for protection. Understandably, he was paranoid after this about his family and what could happen next. Cleaning up the Finks MC seemed impossible. And then he came to another bump in the road. Three months later, him and some of the Finks allegedly beat a man with a tire iron. In September 2018, police alleged Brent gave the orders to hit Nicholas Gold as a plot of revenge. Brent believed that Nicholas had released private photos of a female friend of his, Tara Egglestone. Covert listening devices planted as part of an investigation have recorded a conversation between Brent and Tara on September 8th on the call. She claimed Nicholas and two other men have posted new photos of her on Facebook. The two officers stationed outside the home on the day of the attack have been instructed not to intervene for their own safety. So 
but he let it all go down. The attack happened. Brent and another man were arrested by police and Brent was locked up at Melbourne Assessment Prison over the alleged assault. After being locked up, Brent was bailed out. It's reported while he was out on bail, Brent was trying to change his life and live an honest living. He even wanted to get out the club. The prison whistleblower stated he was doing really well on the outside. He started addressing his mental health issues and was really trying to leave the club and go on a righteous path and he got a good job. It was reported that Brent was in talks with the Finks about leaving the motorcycle club and even started the process of having tattoos removed. However, the director of the Office of Public Prosecution won an appeal in the Supreme Court that saw Brent's bail revoked in February 2019. The same whistleblower stated he hadn't done anything wrong. The OPP just felt he shouldn't have got bail in the first place. As his life took a turn for the worse, Brent just felt it all slip away, fell into a depression. The whistleblower said he made it very, very clear that any chance he got, if he was on his own by himself, he was gonna try to end it all. After several failed attempts, Brent was moved to Port Phillip Prison in Victoria in May 2019, placed in a special unit aimed at assessing inmates with significant mental health issues. But in November that year, he was moved back to Raven Hall Prison, the whistleblower said. Raven Hall is great in theory, but a lot of staff are very young, way too young, inexperienced, and it's not very well ran in comparison to what it should be. It was reported that Brent had complained of being frustrated and bored and started to threaten prison staff over a canceled dental appointment. He told the guard, do we have to do something here to get what we want? The prison doctor, he and other inmates all planned the worst if their demands weren't met. It had been reported that Brent had been desperate to obtain a prison job and had threatened violence if he didn't get his way. Prison staff agreed it was best to move Brent to a unit away from other inmates due to concerns he was gaining too much influence over other prisoners in the unit. The move made Brent distraught. Upon his move to the Forbes unit, he told staff he had no plans to live. He was placed under hourly observation, which quickly identified something bad was coming. Brent had covered his cell in toilet paper and had blocked the cell door with a mattress. When the guards rushed around to a rear window to see what had happened, inside, they saw a chain wedged in the shower. The guards then forced their way into Brent's cell, but they saw him lying on the floor. He could not be revived. The whistleblower said Brent should have never been moved to that unit, given his state of mind. There are padded cells, no hanging points, no electrical points, none of that. He absolutely should have been in one of those. He was a ticking time bomb, 100%. Brent's death raised a lot of questions about the prison system and if this could have been prevented. Was this done on purpose? Is it all a cover-up? Is it a lie? What do you think? Something about it just stinks to me. A national president, hated by many, dies in jail and somehow he killed himself. Is there any real proof that he did this to himself? The coroner is currently doing an investigation. What if it's all a lie and they set him up inside? RP, Brent Wrecker, Finks MC.